G'day guys, John here from uh, FPV Australia. It's been a little while since I posted a video in relation to uh, what's happening in the world of RPAS and UAV and training and all that sort of stuff. So here we are, February, the middle of February 2016. It's been about 18 months since we launched our flight school. Um, lots of students coming through the books and so I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update, tell you uh, where, we, where we've where we been, where we are and where we're headed and sort of try and remove some of the myths and untruths that are floating around. So in no particular order, let me answer some of the questions we've been getting. First and foremost, um, the PPL versus RPAS training. Nothing has changed there. You can either do a UAV certification course, i.e. control a certificate with someone like us or another flight school, um, or you can go and do a PPL theory course to get your control certificate. That hasn't changed. My opinion, don't do PPL theory, do RPAS training courses. Why? Because on an RPAS certification course, you're gonna learn about drones, and you're gonna learn about how drones fly and the legislation and the rules and all that sort of stuff. On a PPL theory course, you're gonna learn about life jackets and Cessnas and icing of your wings. Mm, not really relevant to you flying your Phantom or your Inspire, for instance, okay? Um, so do an RPAS training course. Secondly, we get asked, uh, sub two kilo rule, that must be in now, right? Uh, no, it's not. In fact, it went up before, uh, uh, to, sorry, it went up to get approved just before Christmas in December, along with a whole bunch of changes that CASA wanted approved. For whatever reason, the minister didn't sign it. Why? I honestly don't know. Um, all I can say is that about the same time, um, the US were bringing their laws in about everybody registering for their, their drone for use. So whether that had an influence or not, I honestly don't know. All I can tell you is, as of the as of the middle of February 2016, you need a certificate, a, a, a control certificate, and an UOC to operate under if you want to fly a drone commercially in Australia. Um, that leads me on to the next question: uh, Do do I need? Or just, just incidentally, when where or if will the sub two cooler come in? I don't know. The process now is if it wants to get approved, they have to put it back up for approval. And if if it's gonna happen, it'll happen late 2016, if. Uh, will it get approved? Don't know, time will tell. So that moves me on to the next one. Do I need a UOC or can I operate under someone else's UOC? Um, it's a two-pronged approach. If You will need a UOC if you wanna operate on your own. If you wanna start up your own business and call it ABC Aerials, and go and fly your own your own drones for your own business, you will need a UOC, an operator certificate. Can you fly under someone else's UOC? Yes, you can. There are processes and procedures in place to allow you to fly with a controller certificate under someone else's UOC. That said, it'll come with some complexities. You'll have to talk to the UOC holder about all that and there's insurance ramifications and all that sort of stuff. Um, there are some organizations out there, I think, that are you know, bringing in pilots willy-nilly and having 50-odd pilots under their UOC flying, I will let you make your mind up whether you want to get involved or that or not. That's completely up to you. Um, so yes, you do need a UOC if you want to operate for yourself. No, you don't if you want to fly under someone else's. Will that change in the future? Again, I don't know. It'll just all depend what happens. Um, another question we get asked a lot is, what's the best flight school to go to, John? Um, <laughs> that's hard for me to answer. I run a flight school, so I'm biased. Of course, I'm gonna say, come to us. Here's my advice to you. Research your backside off. Research not only the, the, the company you're going to train with, find out about their background, their history, where they're at, how long they've been training. Um, don't just look at the price and think, oh great, that's, I'll go and get that. If you're interested in just getting a tick, then sure, go and jump on an online course somewhere and, and, and pace your way through it and come out the other side and smile. But if you're serious and you wanna really learn about drones and flying them and the legalities and the operational stuff behind it, Forget the online course, do a quality RPAS training course with someone. Um, find out about the instructors. Find out about what qualifications they have and maybe find someone who's gone through that training school and find out about their experience and see if, if they liked it, if they got what they wanted out of it. Was it good? You know, how was it run? You know, what happened during the day? All that sort of stuff. I'll give you some examples of, of us, just as an example. We've been uh, in business in drones for 10 years. Um, we launched the flight school in September of 2014, pretty much the first of its type in the country. There were a couple of other flight schools doing some similar things, um, but we, we, I digress. Um, all of my instructors are at an instructor rated level. Myself, um, I'm a certified chief instructor from CASA. I'm a certified chief pilot for my own organisation. Um, my instructors are all certified drone pilots as well. 
they are mostly from also from the manned aviation world. So they're instructor rated, either military, ex-military pilots or instructor rated commercial pilots. So I think the last calculation we did is amongst our instructor pool, we've got over 100 years of aviation experience. So very experienced crew on board. Uh, up to this point, I think we've done about 250 students as of uh, February 2016. So a lot of guys out there that you could easily get in touch with to say, hey, what was the course like? And I'd recommend you do that. Um, don't just take my word for it. Don't, don't take the guy's word for it who's running the flight school. Of course, myself and the next guy is gonna tell you that we're the best and he's gonna tell you he's the best. Please do your research, talk to someone who's gone through it, um, find out as much as you can before you hand over your hard earned cash. It's a lot of money and I'd rather see you put it somewhere that you're comfortable putting it. Um, we get asked, do you uh, take people on under your OC? Uh, no, we don't. In fact, we don't even fly for a living for a number of reasons. One, I don't have time to fly for a living. I'm, we, we are far too busy training. But we don't fly for a living because we don't want to train you to enter the market of UAV and, and, and RPAS and certification and go and compete against you on the very market we've trained and, and helped you launch into. That's a conflict of interest for me and lowers my integrity level to a point that I'm not comfortable. So I don't fly for a living. None of my staff fly for a living. Um, we purely train, sell, and service and support. That's what we do best, that's all we do. Um, we don't bring pilots in under our UOC either. Again, that's virtually the same thing, isn't it? Instead of me flying the drone and charging someone for it, competing against you, I've got my buddies out the back door doing the same thing. Doesn't happen, there is no pilots under our UOC. Um, again, we're not gonna try and compete against you on the very market we're trying to help you get established in. What we want to do is be that backup support. We'll train and educate you, all well and good. We'll sell you a drone if you don't have one, all well and good. We will service and support that drone. We've got a lot of our customers and clients use us as a service agent, um, our mongrel gear side of our business, uh, to service the drones as part of their UOC servicing arrangement. So we can do that as well on their UOC. Um, so that's what we do. We don't fly for a living, we don't compete against you, um, we, we train you and then we'll come in from the back end and support you in your venture into the drone world. Um, so look into all of that and make a, make a comfortable decision. Where are we going uh, is another question we get asked. What's, what's in store for this industry, John? I really don't know, to be honest. I just believe we're at a tip of a very big iceberg. This, this industry is still very, very young. It's certainly not saturated, as you, you might hear from some people. Um, it'd be like saying you know, mechanics. Well, how many mechanics are there in every suburb? And they've got plenty of work on. It's the same in any industry. There's plenty of builders, there's plenty of taxi drivers, there's, there's plenty of everything. So there's, there's still plenty of room for drone and good drone operators. Um, technology is gonna make it a whole lot easier to do what we want to do with drones. That's un, you know, un, undoubtedly what's going to happen. And for those in IT world, Moore's Law, technology doubles every 18 months. Two years from now, things are going to be very different again. Where will we go legislation-wise? I don't know, to be honest with that either. Um, I'm concerned, and people say I'm a bit of a, bit of a paranoid fellow, but I'm concerned we're going to have a nasty incident with a drone. I think it's a numbers game and it's only a matter of time. The more drones go in the air, well, the more chances we have of something or someone getting hurt. We've seen a young fellow in Britain lose an eye. I think that's minor as to what might happen in the future. I'm, I'm dreading a, a drone manned aircraft mix. I think that'll happen at some point too, but I, I hope it doesn't and I hope no one gets hurt. Will there be a knee-jerk reaction from government when that happens? I hope not, but like most things, that's what happens. So I'm, I am a little concerned about that. I'm excited as heck because I just think this industry is, is fantastic and it's forever changing and you gotta stay one step ahead of the game. It's, it's brilliant, I love it. Um, so look, my advice, do your research, um, look around. Our website's full of Q&A. Um, it's fpvaustralia.com.au. You can also uh, give us a call. 02611128551 or you can send us an email training at fpvaustralia.com.au I'll happily answer any of your questions there's no pressure from us um, you're not going to get a, a pressure sales pitch I'll just try and answer some of your questions and try and help you get on the right path to making a decision for yourself if you are in the business of hiring someone to do some drone work and you're watching this video please only hire a certified operator not only are you going to get someone who's trained and you know they're trained uh, either in the manned aircraft space or a trained RPAS pilot, but they're gonna be insured, okay? 
um, and, and ask to see a copy of their insurance so you know they are insured. So should something go wrong, everything's covered and it's all above board. Um, so I guess that's where we are, that's where we've been and I don't know where we're headed but I'm super excited about it. Look, if you want some advice um, on anything sort of RPAS and training and drone related, please feel free to either give us a call. 02 6112 will find us. We're on the web, fpvaustralia.com.au. There's a big Q&A there with lots of questions and answers that can sort of answer a lot of your questions. Or send us an email, training at fpvaustralia.com.au. No pressure from us. Pick the phone up, call us. We'll happily chat to you and, and, and give you as much advice as we can. And then please take, take that and then go away and, and find out information of your own accord so that you can really get the right information to make the right choice. Because we, we all know it's an expensive route. And, and I'd rather see you spend your money knowing you've done it, making the choices you want to make rather than a pushy sales pitch to go and do a training course somewhere. Um, again, fpvaustralia.com.au, training at fpvaustralia.com.au or 02-6112-8551. If you're wondering, we are all over the country. We go to all four corners of this big brown land of ours to train. So if you did want to get onto one of our courses, I'm sure there'll be one near you at some point. Um, until next time, uh, I do hope this video was informative to you. Please safe skies if you are flying and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Enjoy. Thank you.